before yeah. the RTD. Okay, mm -hmm. it's okay, perfect. So you guys know how to use them. So use it basically just dial it in. Yeah. There's different dials. For stripping wise, I'll always go the heaviest, no matter what. There's two different settings, less and more. I'll just always do more. So one bucket I'll just put stripper in without um that. We have any more one more mod.
These are called neutralizer conditioner packs. Um, for every three gallons of water, throw one of these packs. So one bucket I'll leave straight water, second bucket I'll just dump. I think I got about three gallons in there, I'll just dump one of those in. That's all you gotta do with these. And that neutralizes what now? It will neutralize any chemical residue left from the stripper on the floor. It'll zap everything. Huh? So that would be like step three then probably? One of those in one bucket, just one pack? Yeah, just, yeah. And, and that will be the, the, uh, the last bucket that you will use. First bucket, you put the stripper down with it, and then we'll come back with that wet-dry back. We'll, uh, I'll show you the steps. So the pieces of equipment that you will need for stripping will be this low-speed machine with a black pad. So this is a 175 RPM swing machine. This is your pad holder for it. You put this on, match it up, turn it, uh, yeah, quarter turn, and you put this black pad on the floor and you put that pad over top. Just held out by friction, right? Pretty yeah. Much. Or, yeah, what's, because that, that, that weight of that motor is about 110 pounds, so once you put the weight of the motor on it, it'll keep the pad on. Most time you want to use a fresh, clean black pad when you're doing the job. Um, I like the 3M High Pro pads are the best stripping pad out there. I'm not sure what pads he uses, but um, if it was me, I'd use the High Pro 3M pads. This looks like a 17-inch machine too. So this is the first piece of equipment that we'll use. We'll use a wet dry back after that. Suck up the stuff on the floor. Uh, everything, for the, the first thing that I'll do is to get all my stuff ready. You know, I'll, I'll have my mop buckets ready ahead of time. I'll have my pad, that ready. I'll have this plugged in. You know, I'll just get everything ready the first step. Right I'm just trying to see if he has anything else in here. He's got a crusher wrench, I'm not sure what he uses that for. <laughs> <laughs> to beat the machine if it doesn't work. I'm not sure what he uses this for. Here's where I left my wrench. Yeah. <laughs> I just wondered if, if uh, we should do the bill of the floor, because it's going to look, I mean, once we put finish on, it's going to have one great shiny spot in the middle. <laughs> no, I'm not sure if he wants that or it doesn't matter, because this floor is. Really? He said they could finish it later too. Yeah, but then you'd have to redo everything again. Because you're not going to finish it going around that section. Okay. I'm not sure if we want to do a quarter. But well, we can do that and you just have to redo it again. The table for the chosen people, that's not. Yeah. So, okay, we'll just leave that. Um, 
So I'll go plug this machine in. <laughs> So the first step is to get the chemical and work it on the floor. So I'll use my chemical stripper. Dip it in really good and you want to have it stay wet. So I'm not going to rinse the uh, mop head out at all. And you want to cover this, the whole surface. You want that chemical to start eating away at the finish. So we got it at uh, 1057. The biggest thing with chemical stripper is that you never want it to dry out. You let it dry out, and you gotta redo it again. But you wanna have enough on that you wanna have it really wet on there. The thing where you're doing this job, don't use good shoes or clothes, because it's gonna get nasty. So I'm mopping on pretty heavy. Most time you won't have tape on the edges like I do. This is just for demonstration purposes. And you may have to do this if, if there's heavy buildup on your floors. You might have to do this twice. So. This, I mean, I've, I've done the floors, I've had to do it three times. Just because there's so much heavy buildup of finish on there. If uh, people haven't, haven't uh, stripped and locks for, I've seen people not strip locks for 15, 20 years and they got layer upon layer on top of it. So sometimes you do have to do this more than once. Um, in the ideal world, you just have to do it once and be done. But So you want to, then you want to let the chemicals sit and work onto the floor. So we'll let this sit on there for a good 10 minutes before we do anything. So if, if you were to come in this room and, and, and you got to strip out the whole room, I would you know, take everything out of here. I would do the first half of it with, with the chemical. You know, I, I, would, I would cut the room in half and just lay my chemical down throughout the first half of the room that I'm going to do and let that sit well for 10 minutes. Actually, if you let it sit longer, it does work out. Okay. So, yeah, let's, you know, the uh, the uh, minimum is 10 minutes. Sometimes, I like to, if it's really heavy buildup, I'll let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. Like in this room, it's, there, there's there's not much air movement, so so this floor is not going to dry really quick. But if you got fans going stuff like that, then it dries out fast faster. But yeah, a good 10 minutes at least. And like I say, if, if you can let it sit longer, the better. 